I am a computer scientist, and I'm an artist too. Today, I want to tell you my story of boundary crossing, and I want to show you one thing, that there's never just black and white. I used to be the numbers guy, the one who would usually know the answer to math problem and even competed in math Olympics. I've also always loved creating, so in junior year of high school, I started slowly learning how to code using online resources. But then, that same year, I took this Latin American literature class. The teacher, crazy dude, he completely changed my views. This math guy was now starting to be enticed by the artistic, the inexact, the sometimes irresolvable. And at some point, it seemed as if I had to make a choice, either to follow the artistic path or the numeric exact one. Yet, as I told you, I don't see anything as black and white. I was sure there was a way to bring together these seemingly distant universes. I then decided to embark on a creative journey in order to combine art and computation. As a simple starting point, I asked myself, how can computers generate graphic art automatically? After some research, I decided to experiment with uh, fractal trees. These are very simple to generate and are usually used as an exercise in introductory computer science courses. The basic idea is that a starting line is drawn and it then divides into two, and each one of those divides into two over and over again for a certain number of steps. I coded a single program to experiment with them and the first version looked like this. I brought them up despite their simplicity because drawing them by hand is a feat that no human could possibly achieve in such a small amount of time. So they managed to illustrate this concept very easily, how accelerating simple processes can augment artistic creation. After adding some color and more detail, these were some of the products I was achieving. I then decided to add some randomness to the generation in order to create something more organic and natural. And sometimes mistakes in the code in ended up in interesting results. <laughs> in the end, I was getting these results. At this point, I knew I wanted to involve my passion for literature somehow. So I started looking for ways in which to extract information from books that could then be used for the generation of these kind of graphics. I definitely wanted to go beyond the obviously quantifiable, such as the length of the text or the number of words per chapter. And color caught my attention. Now, let's try a fun exercise. I'm gonna show you some words, and I want you to say out loud which colors they bring to your mind. Don't think that much about it. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> now, following this idea, Saif Mohammed, a senior researcher at the NRC, 
conducted polls in order to determine what color people usually associated with the majority of words in English language. These are some of the top words per color. As you can see, sometimes the, it's very evident, such as leaf being green, but then it can get more interesting, such as creativity being orange, or happiness being yellow. Saif Muhammad also conducted data analysis of Twitter in order to relate words with the sentiment. So these are some of the most positive and negative words according to their usage in social networks. Now, after organizing all of this data, I coded a program that reads through books, counting word by word the most dominant colors and the overall sentiment. And using this information, a fractal tree is then generated as output. This is what the first version looked like. This one over here is Moby Dick. You can see how blue is the most dominant color. And this one over here is the diary of a young girl and Frank's account of struggling and hiding as a young Jewish girl during World War II. And surprisingly, it was one of the most positive books I analyzed with my program. And it contains colors such as yellow related with happiness. I just think that all of this insight is fascinating and over time, I uh, kept working on this project and I've improved it greatly. I'm now gonna show you a demo. So it looks like this. On the top left corner, there's a list of books that we can choose from. So let's go ahead and pick Moby Dick again. We now have a seed that represents a book and we can drag around and plant it wherever we want. As soon as we do this, the program starts reading through the book, counting word by word the most dominant colors and calculating the overall sentiment. Then using this information, this fractal tree is generated. All of this happens in seconds, and that's only possible because of the way computation augments and accelerates creation. Now, if we hover over the stem, we can see a title of the book. And each of the leaves represents a word in the most predominant colors. So this blue one over here, the ship, and this one's boy, comparison vacation, the Y1, you can read it well, but it's almighty. Now let's go ahead and pick a different book, such as Romeo and Juliet. As you can see, it ends up being quite pink, but then also kind of dark. And <laughs> if we go ahead and take a look at the words, we'll see how we can find things such as friend right next to dreadful. Or over here, sin right next to love and death. Now, as you can see, there's a completely different personality between these two books. And this difference becomes even more evident if we go ahead and plant something such as the Bible.
as this one contains more colors associated with uh, spirituality and purity. Now, take a look at the stems, and you'll notice how there's a different tone between each one of them. This represents the book's sentiment. And something interesting I discovered when putting this together is that there are barely any negative books in our culture. So a uh, black stem represents a completely neutral book, and the more positive it is, the clearer the stem becomes. Now, have in mind that this is not only a still image, it's an interface that every single one of you could use. Input the titles of your favorite books and your own forest of literature would be generated. It's an interactive artwork that allows users themselves to create. Also, I am challenging the usual conventions of literature. I'm decomposing language, liberating it from the usual grammatical structures that influence our perception. Taking apart the sentences, sifting through the words, extracting their essence as a color, and putting this together as an organic being so that we can submerge in language visually, directly. I am using computer science to expose books in a completely different perspective bringing together computation, literature, and even nature. And as I told you at the beginning, nothing is just black and white, such as the ink on the paper of these books. There is a whole spectrum of color in everything around us. And we should be attentive for this always seeking to create new ways of seeing things. So don't be afraid of decomposing your usual perceptions, of sifting through your passions, extracting their essence, and bringing them together as something new. Thank you. <laughs>